When I started investing in real estate, it began with this question, what kind of real estate do I want to own? Like for example, I'm sitting in this commercial building. Should I buy commercial real estate? Or should it be single family homes? Or should it be multifamily? Should it be Airbnb? There's so many different strategies out there and there's a lot of noise. There's definitely a lot of confusion. And even though I have really strong opinions on what the best strategy is, the truth is there's a lot of valid formats. Today, I'm gonna to give you the survival guide to the top four strategies in real estate. And I'm gonna compare them to each other and share with you my opinions on which one will serve you the most. Come here, I want to show you something. So I own this commercial space. Um, right now it's set up for a studio shot, but this is also where I will hold a, an event next month with 600 people. This is a commercial building and it's very different than residential real estate. It's very different than multifamily. That's kind of the cool thing about real estate. There's so many different choices, but there's something that unifies all of them together in an understanding of which is best. And it's three letters, R-O-I. It stands for return on investment. And I bring that up at the start of this video because often we get really confused with, oh, Chris, should I be focusing on Airbnbs? That sounds popular, right? When Airbnb launched in 2008, that made that kind of cool. I heard you can make crazy good money there. But really what you should be focusing on is the ROI, the return on investment of all the different strategies. Which one's gonna make you the most money for the least time, with the least effort, with the least risk? And that's what we're gonna explore today. Check it out. Today, I'm gonna to get you acquainted with this. Four different types of real estate investments. I think four of the most important ones that are worth comparing to each other. And it's about this right here. If you do it the right way, you get this stuff. If you do it the wrong way, it costs you this stuff. And that's why people associate real estate with some degree of risk. It is important that you make the right strategy and it is important that you understand the pros and cons of real estate and each one of these, which is why today I'm giving you the survival guide on all four major types. And then I'm gonna end with my bias. Like I've done a couple billion dollars worth of real estate. I'm gonna share with you where I think it's at and basically where you should be swimming. Let's get some basics out of the way. Before I show you these four investment strategies, let's just talk about why real estate in the first place. Number one, it's tax efficient. When you start making this stuff, you have to ask, how much of it do I get to keep? Do I have to lop 20% of it off the top and give it to the government? Well, maybe, but in general, you should know this. Real estate is hugely tax efficient. There are ways of growing your portfolio and never paying taxes on it ever. The second reason, a very popular reason, is the cash flow. As in, I put a renter or a tenant on the premise, and guess what? Every month they pay me money so they can either work there or live there. And the question is, is there leftover money? As in, hey, um, this is the rent for the year uh, of what I collect, but this is the cost to run it. And it looks like the money that I get is more than the money that it costs to maintain this business operation. And the leftover money, if I approximate it, this is called cash flow. This is the leftover money that you get more or less on a monthly basis. And if you do real estate the right way, I got news for you. It produces cash flow. Your 401k doesn't. Your IRA doesn't, right? The stock market doesn't do these things. It is one of the cool, unique factors of real estate. The third thing that I love about real estate in general is that it has a strong demand. As in, as long as population keeps growing and business is booming, people need real estate for their place of operation or a place to live. And it's kind of a natural thing. Like, do you believe in love? Because if you do, people probably going to make some babies and that's going to require the need for more real estate. And number four, you have heard about this thing called inflation. Your money every year loses a little bit of value. It's only supposed to lose about 3% value, but you know, with Biden um, sitting in the big cherry, the number is a little bit higher than that right now. Real estate is a very natural hedge against inflation. It's one of the few investments that gets better with inflation. While loan payments remain the same, you can charge more for rent, increasing cash flow, ultimately profitability. Inflation is really good if you own hard, physical, tangible assets, AKA real estate. All right, let's start with my favorite. If you're a subscriber on my channel, you watch my social media, I spend a lot of time talking about single family homes. But the big question is why? Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons. First of all, the principle is simple. I buy a house and I put someone in it and then they pay me rent to live there. Pros? 
there's very little turnover, right? Like there's a lot of people that will say, hey, great house, great location. Can we stay another year or two or three? You also have appreciation, which means because of that love connection thing with human beings making babies and America still being popular enough that people want to move here, migrate here, live here, is that the value of these things just continue to increase with time. And then there's a low cost to manage this stuff, right? Like you can hire a property manager for 10% of the gross rent. It's manageable. It's a scalable number. And those are some of the pros that get people in the investing game in the first place. But there are some disadvantages. For example, you don't get to control the rent. You can't be like, you know what? $1,600 a month was cool last year, but I think we should go like 2,200. It doesn't work that way. The market is actually determining what it is. So on the one hand, I kind of like that it's predictable, but I also hate that it's hard to move that number. Similarly, you don't have this whole game of economies of scale most of the time. It's like, hey, I can go back to the bank and get another loan and another loan, but eventually the bank's gonna say, hey, I get this real estate investing thing's worked out well for you, but we're just done giving you money. And you're like, ah, like, how, how do I continue growing? How do I expand my portfolio? You can't. All right, let's talk about multifamily. Vina Jetty is a friend of mine. She's done over a billion dollars in multifamily, or maybe you've heard of Grant Cardone. He syndicated a lot of big projects. Multifamily property is a residential property that has more than one housing unit. This can include apartment complexes, condominiums, you get the idea. So here's some of the things that are really cool about this. You can add value through amenities. If you like upgrade the place and you add a little park area, or you wanna make a little dog walk or a playground, Around, you can actually charge more rent. You have more control over that. It's also faster to scale because it's like, well, I did just buy a hundred units and the bank over here on residential is going to limit me to 10 single family homes. But based on this project, I bought a hundred doors all at once. And there's a lot of ease in financing. Uh, banks consider it low risk as long as you have your numbers delved out right. However, there are some disadvantages for you to be aware of. It can be more expensive, as in, well, that whole thing costs $12 million or $3 million. And if you're new to the game investing, those numbers can seem kind of scary at first. Not to mention it's also a really competitive market, as in there's lots of investors that want to take these down, even though they cost a lot of money, because there's good money to be made on them. They love that they can do them in tranches. It's like I get to place a ton of money all at once and step into a lot of doors. And because of that, sometimes it's hard to get a really good deal on one of these. And you also have to look at management. Like there's a certain level of difficulty associated with this, because it's not like, oh, I hired a property manager like a single family home and give them 10% of the rent. You have someone that lives there that's taking phone calls that's fixing things you need a good reputation so you have a lot of that to consider in the game of multifamily Ah, uh, the really popular fad of Airbnb, VRBO. Everyone's excited about owning a piece of property in a nice edgy part of town, maybe right on the lake, maybe right beachfront. And they're thinking, shoot, man, I could be here from time to time. And if I just Airbnb this, I'm probably gonna make a small fortune. That's what a lot of people think. And it's true some of the time, check it out. Particularly since Airbnb started in 2008, short-term rentals are a way to maximize profits on single property. As in, you could literally do a long-term rental, but now everyone's saying, uh-uh, this part of town is uniquely desirable in a different way. We should only rent this for one, two, three, four, or five nights at a time, or a week at a time. You pick the number of nights, we're gonna charge you a premium because you're not a long-term tenant, and voila, I make a lot more money. Which is why in the pros category, you have three to four times more income on a long-term rental potentially, right? It's very seasonal. There are seasons where that thing is just constantly rented out and people are paying a pretty penny on it. I can also reserve this for a personal use as in like, oh, my rental that I have over there with tenants that have been there for three years, it's not like I ever drop by and like do barbecue with them. Here, when it's not being used, it's like, I can use it for free. That's like a really popular notion why people like being in this game. And if you're in the right property, in the right part of town, there can be definitely high demand. So these are all good things. But there are some disadvantages because I'm gonna tell you maybe from a little bit of personal experience that it doesn't always go that way. Check it out. 
it comes with fees, as in like when you hire someone to manage this for you, they're sometimes charging not like 10% a month, they're charging you 20, 30, 40%. I know areas where it can be as high as 50%, which by the way can completely kill the business model. It also requires time and management. Like this is a complex business. How long are you gonna stay for? How do I get you the tea? We need to line up the cleaning fees. We need to do all of these different things. And you can have unruly guests. Um, you know, maybe the wrong people in your property. So every business comes with its own challenges. This has a lot of potential really high upside, but it also has some really unattractive downsides. And finally, let's talk about commercial real estate investing. Commercial is really different than the others because you're not putting a person into the property that's looking for a place to sleep or party or live. Commercial properties are any property where commerce takes place. Often, we're talking about a business. This is where a business resides. So here's some of the pros. Rent is not controlled by the market. This is so cool. My business partner and friend, Dolph DeRoos, who's an expert at the game of commercial real estate, loves this. He said, man, if you can take a property and find a way to increase its value where someone would pay you a lot higher rent, they can. There's no rules that that can't be done. And if you can find a way to double the rent, you can double the value of the property. Man, I bought the property for $7 million. I found a way to double the rent because of what I did. And now it's not worth $7 million is worth $14 million, that is a really cool, unique advantage that you find with commercial. Another advantage is that you get to negotiate with each client, so when you actually put someone on the premise, you might charge one person for a part of the building $19 a foot, and there's a reason why someone else pays $28 a foot. You also have your lowest maintenance cost, because guess what? Clients say, I'm renting for this for business, so I'm responsible for all of my choices. They pick up all of those maintenance dues on their own. And you also wind up with the longest leases, sometimes for five years, sometimes 10 years, sometimes even longer. There are, however, some very distinct disadvantages. Every property is different, so it requires specialized knowledge. You really want to have someone at your side helping walk you through some of these deals to make sure that you don't make a mistake. And lastly, sometimes there's a larger initial investment because we're not talking about $100,000 commercial places. Like, I'm not saying those don't exist, but commercial ranges from, you know, something that is very inexpensive all the way to skyscrapers and things that can be worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So Chris, why do you believe so much in single family real estate? Well, remember at the start of the video, I talked to you about these three important letters, ROI. We've been talking about strategy, but at the end of the day, you have to normalize them and ask, what's gonna produce a predictable ROI? And the good news is you can specialize in any of these strategies and have any of them work for you. But at the end of the day, what I'm looking for is a system. I'm looking for a way to repeat the process over and over again and get a predictable result. For example, look at this $10,000. Imagine that you had an ATM that if you put 10,000 in, $50,000 came out. How many times would you insert $10,000 into that machine? probably as many times as you possibly could. That's what I do with real estate, I mechanize it. And one of the things that I found is that it is easiest for me to mechanize and automate when it's single family. And so my strategy is I buy below the median, single family homes generally under quarter million dollars, I buy them in the most attractive markets, and I always buy them where I'm getting at least a 25% annual ROI. Now that's an important number because it means that I double my money generally every three years. And over a couple of decades, you can take, call it $50,000 and turn it into $4.3 million if you can turn single family real estate into producing 25% year over year every single year. And I learned a long time ago how to do that. So real estate is like an ATM where I put something in and over time it gives me a lot out. Now, you can certainly find ways of doing that with some of these other strategies. I've got my preferences based on what takes the least time, the least effort, the least risk, and I love sharing it with other people. It's not the only way to make money. I do it through franchises, owning businesses, a lot of other things, which is why today I have a gift for you. I'm offering you a free custom real estate investment plan. As in, I've got 30 people on my team that I have trained to walk, talk, and think just like me. They can evaluate your financial situation and say, oh, looks like you have a home with some equity in it, or it looks like you have a 401k or an IRA. I wonder what would happen if you put it in this real estate or that machine, or if you had it growing this way. And what I'm able to do is basically share with you an alternate reality. One, where your financial goals and dreams 
literally can manifest a lot quicker and faster, likely than some of the choices that you're personally making right now. And if you'd like to see what that alternate financial reality really could look like, click the link below, ask for a free game plan, get with my team. We will, I will put myself through them in your shoes and basically show you step-by-step -step exactly what I would do. If it makes sense, well then today's video just leveled up your financial life in a really huge way. Click the link and start the next step of your journey. Ah, single family real estate. Chris, how did I know you'd say that? Listen, in all fairness, of all those other strategies, there's only one that severely tempts me to do something vastly different, and it's commercial real estate, which is why I made a video doing a really deep dive comparing single family to commercial. And the question is, five years from now, which one actually makes you wealthier? If you wanna know, click here, watch this video, let me show you.